what are the best settings for this monitor. And by best settings, I mean the settings which I adopted in the review. It satisfies my colorimeter and the targets I go for there, and also my own preferences, and they work on my unit. Be whether individual units and preferences vary. So I like to use user for the game mode. The other presets aren't really set up as well, and some of them have various strange filters related to sharpness and saturation levels, so they upset the image in many ways. And whether you select user in gaming or professional, it's the same thing. There are some pro mode settings which you might like to use instead, and these are sRGB, Adobe RGB, and Display P3. These are emulation modes, so they clamp the gamut, as explored in the review, close to the given target, so sRGB, Adobe RGB, or DCI P3 for the gamut. And with these settings, you can adjust brightness according to your own preferences, but the color temperature control is locked off. With the user setting, you use the full native gamut, there's no clamping going on. So that's how you'll get the full saturation potential, the full vibrancy, etc. And I always like to use the full native gamut when I'm reviewing and also look at any emulation modes separately. Another setting you might want to change is Adaptive Sync. If you want to use Adaptive Sync, so you can use NVIDIA's G-Sync compatible mode or AMD FreeSync, for example, you have to make sure Adaptive Sync is set to on. Response time setting is also of interest, and I would recommend setting that to fast. In image, you'll find your brightness control. I set that to 28, and that got close to my usual target of around 160 nits, which I tend to go for for consistency in my reviews. But make sure you're adjusting this according to your own preferences and lighting environment. As explored in the review, this monitor has a very impressive brightness adjustment range. I also like to adjust colour temperature, set that to customization, and I have red at 50, green at 49, and blue at 44. On my unit, this got close to 6500K, which is the target I go for, with a good neutral green channel, but be aware that individual units will vary, so these settings may not be optimal in all cases. So to recap, I've set the game mode to user, I've enabled adaptive sync, I've made sure the response time is set to fast, brightness is at 28, and I made some colour temperature adjustments as well. I've now enabled HDR in Windows. It's not going to take too long to go through this because there's not really much to consider here. I'm on Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I'm running the game under HDR. It's just more interesting to look at than the desktop and it's an actual HDR environment now. So I'd recommend sticking to user for the game mode again. If you change this to various other settings, different filters are applied and many of them will over sharpen and make things look rather ugly. There's oversaturation going on in many cases as well. But if you happen to prefer the balance with one of the other settings, feel free to use it. Be aware that if you use a pro mode, sRGB, Adobe RGB, or Display P3, then it looks the same as if you'd selected user. It doesn't clamp the gamut or adjust the gamut in any way. And that's appropriate for HDR that you'd be using the full native gamut. And in terms of what you can adjust aside from this, very little. There's again the response time setting, and again I'd recommend fast there. You can enable and disable adaptive sync, you can use VRR and HDR at the same time, but you can't adjust things like brightness or the colour temperature. Back to SDR now, I'd just like to quickly cover a setting you might like to use for competitive gaming, if you don't really mind so much about an accurate look to things, or accurate gamma tracking, but rather you prefer a competitive edge and you would like enhanced visibility in dark areas, that kind of thing. So I'm on Legom, legom.nl, the black levels test, what you see here in the video does not represent what you'd see firsthand, but I'll still be able to show you the relative change that is made with the setting I'm going to explore. And that is night vision. So if you set this to normal, it enhances the dark shades in particular and a bit for the medium shades. Strong has a stronger effect and strongest even stronger. So it lifts up the darker shades in particular to improve your visibility. And AI, that will change depending on the content being displayed. So here it's quite similar to the strong setting really, but it does depend on that content. So it may be stronger or weaker depending on what's being displayed. Also be aware that even with the strongest setting, the black depth doesn't change, so it doesn't impede your contrast. You could also use AI vision, and this is similar to the AI setting, except that it also adds a dynamic contrast element or HDCR, which is high dynamic contrast ratio. So that means the backlight will adjust as a single unit according to the overall level of light or dark in the scene. So it might brighten up if there's lots of bright shade being displayed, for example. 